put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching, and she was crying out for help. But the guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life, my life. Right now, she's weak and vulnerable, and she needs to be around people who aren't gonna take advantage of that. I have no friends. Well, Kevin Hunter just keeps proving over and over again that he is Wendy Williams' biggest op, but he just might have gone too far this time around. A couple of days ago, Wendy's team came out to reveal she has been diagnosed with dementia. People from all over have been sending her love and well wishes, all except Kevin. Well, because he doesn't care. Not only does Kevin not care, but he also threw shade at Wendy and mocked her situation, vowing to destroy her completely because she didn't give him money to fund his life with Sharina. But yeah, the same woman he cheated on Wendy with and left her for. Y'all, Kevin has the most audacity because he is determined to make Wendy suffer even more. And yeah, it looks like he's out for blood. It was just revealed that Wendy Williams was diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and FTD. This is going to be talked about on the new Lifetime special that is airing this Saturday about her life. The actual article says in 2023, after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and FTD. Aphasia is a condition affecting language and communication abilities, and FTD is a progressive disorder impacting behavior and cognitive functions. Now, if y'all thought that Kevin Hunter would feel bad for Wendy Williams during her tough times that she's currently facing, or actually show some remorse for his role in her situation, well, you're very wrong. Because not only is Kevin not remorseful, but he is actually gloating over her downfall and mocking her because she refused to give him money when he went broke. Now, a lot of people might think that Wendy's issues started when she lost her show due to her poor health, but that's not actually the case because she had actually actually started to spiral long before that, and it had everything to do with Kevin and his boo thing, Sharina Hudson. Kevin's affair with Sharina started way back in 2007, and listen, was he the perfect sugar daddy to her? He spent a whole lot of money on her, buying houses, cars, designer clothes, and even setting up multiple businesses for her. This was all coming straight out of Wendy's wallet, because Kevin could barely afford his own bills, and could definitely not afford to spoil Sharina like he was doing. It was you all with the drone and, and took a picture. And I read about it in the blogs and the tabloids, the address of this place that he had purchased to share with this backwoods bitch, nine miles from my house in Livingston. And they're living the high life. I went to the house, a beautiful house with a three car garage. I was cupping my eyes at every window. Oh, hmm, okay, not in my house, but this is a good come up for a 32-year-old woman who's been involved with my husband for over 10 years. Pulled out my spray paint. <laughs> and I spray painted Kevin and Wendy forever. Cheating on a woman who pays your bills and then using her money to finance your affair is nasty work. However, Wendy loved Kevin so much that she was willing to turn a blind eye to the affair. But that changed in 2019 when he got Sharina pregnant and Wendy could no longer pretend like the affair wasn't happening. Kevin's betrayal tore her apart completely. And this was the beginning of her downward spiral because Kevin had allegedly alienated her from her family with his manipulation. There was nobody that she could even talk to about it. I had nobody again to talk to, but the times now were even deeper than they ever were in my life. I couldn't call my mom, my dad, my sister. They would have just said, just leave, just leave. And I'm like, I, but I'm still in love. I don't know what to do. Like, are you serious with this? This is really going down. This is going down. Now at first, Wendy tried to play it strong by getting Kevin fired on the same day that she filed a divorce from him. You may, I don't recommend that you work with your husband because I made him my manager. And then when I decided to divorce him, he had to be fired. In other words, I made him divorced and unemployed all in one day. But 
Wendy wasn't strong enough to deal with the situation in its entirety, and it landed her on a drinking streak that quickly got out of hand, causing her to binge on alcohol and, well, y'all can guess how that went. Her drinking got out of hand, causing her to be forced to go into a wellness facility. Her health issues started, and things quickly got messy for her after that. Now, her rep, Sean Zanotti, issued a statement saying, Wendy Williams checked into a wellness facility to help manage her overall health issues. She is taking some time to focus on her health and wellness as she prepares for a major comeback, the next level in her career with the Wendy Experience podcast. Miss Williams is being treated by a team of some of the best doctors in the world. We ask for your prayers and well wishes during this time. But even during the last season of the Wendy show, she was absent because of her health issues. And even though the producers tried to keep things running by using guest hosts, they ultimately had to cancel the show at the end of the season because it was clear that Wendy was not coming back. She was absent from the big screen for the next couple of years. There were rumors of her trying to land other projects in the entertainment industry and failing to do so. At first, there was talk of her getting a podcast that would be filmed in her New York apartment, but that never happened. Then her team announced that she was going to be featured in a Lifetime documentary that's dropping in a couple of days. But the documentary was filmed sometime between 2021 and 2022, and fans were eager to see Wendy back on their screens after such a long time. Surely, if her team was approving a documentary, then surely she must be in a good place, right? Well, if the trailer for the documentary is to be believed, Wendy is way worse than we imagined. Even though the trailer lasted for less than two minutes, it was long enough for us to know that she's in really bad shape. She claimed that she was broke as F, and it kind of seemed like she was still struggling with alcohol. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching and she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Her son, Kevin Jr., also appeared in the trailer, again saying that he didn't want his mom to work, and it kind of sounded like he didn't want her doing the documentary. She always talks about how she wants to work, but I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. He then claimed that the court-ordered guardian wasn't taking good care of Wendy and was leaving her open to being taken advantage of. I feel like the guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life, my life. Right now she's weak and vulnerable and she needs to be around people who aren't gonna take advantage of that. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? Now we knew it was bad, but it's nothing compared to the new reports that we're now getting about her because the new updates paint a grim picture of Wendy's situation. Her medical team released a statement a couple of days ago about her current health status. And unfortunately, it's not the news that we were hoping for. The statement said, in 2023, after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and a frontotemporal dementia, FTD. Her symptoms, which combined impact her language and communication, behavior, and cognitive functions, have already presented significant hurdles in Wendy's life. Now, for those of you who have been following Wendy's situation, you'll probably remember that Tasha Kay actually claimed that Wendy had dementia back in 2021. It's done, and I don't like to say this, Lion's Gate got her in a safe house, okay? She is not at her Manhattan apartment. Wendy Williams is living in a safe house away from Papa Ray. Now, she has lost all blood circulation to the bottom uh, of her legs and her feet, so she can't walk. Her voter goal is out of control, and she has early stages of uh, uh, dementia. Now, at that time, Wendy's brother, Tommy, denied the allegations, claiming that Wendy was fine and didn't have dementia. He said, we haven't had any alerts like that, and I haven't seen seen anything like that or have had conversations with her that would lead me to believe that. We routinely go up and check on Wendy. So no, we don't have any concerns concerning her mental state. It's all physical. Now to be fair, her medical team did say that she only got diagnosed last year, so her brother probably wasn't lying. But like her medical condition wasn't bad enough, her family members also claimed that Wendy's team and her court-ordered guardian had completely alienated her from her family. Wendy's sister, Wanda Finney, spilled the tea. In revealed that the Guardian started putting up walls between Wendy and her family shortly after the guardianship began back in April 2022. That's nearly two years ago, and they've been cut off from Wendy ever since. Wanda also revealed that the family wasn't even carried along or given updates about Wendy's health, and the last time they heard anything about her health was in 2021. Wanda said, when she was in Florida, there were a number of people involved. Even beyond family, there were doctors involved and people in Wendy's 
professional world that were involved. She had a health team in place, nurses in place, and she had a family in place. She was getting healthier. Wanda also blasted Wendy's guardian for keeping Wendy away from her family, saying, I don't think that there's anyone Wendy needed more than her family. Separate the money part. All I want to know is that my sister is going to live and that she's going to be healthy. The concern of the family has always been Wendy's health. Well, Wendy's niece, Alex Finney, also talked about the extreme measures that Wendy's guardian took to keep Wendy away from her family. Alex claimed that Wendy is required to call her family members from a blocked phone number, meaning they can't reach out directly to her. Alex also said, and I say this honestly, we went through birthdays, we went through the holidays, we went through the illness. There was a period when my grandfather was in the hospital. There was no way to contact her and let her know what was going on with her 93-year-old father. A snippet from the documentary was released a couple of days ago, and it showed just how much Wendy was out of it. In the snippet, Black China was talking to her, but she could barely follow the conversation. That's why I love you so much. Because even when I was going through my darkest times, like, you never used that against me. You know what I mean? And that's how you know that the love is, like, genuine. And it's yeah. always going to be there. You know, and I'm always be here for you, like, straight up. You can call my phone whenever. I'm so serious. And I think I'm going to be back and forth from New York, so I'm going to be coming to see you more. Well, my real name is Wendy Hunter. Hunter. Yep. <laughs> And I'm divorced. Yes. He's got no money. As sad as dementia is, what's even sadder is the fact that she still loves Kevin, even after all this time and everything that he did to her. Now with this happening, you would think that Kevin would feel sorry for her or even remorseful. After all, his betrayal is what caused her to go down this path to start with. However, according to an insider, Kevin doesn't feel the least bit sorry or remorseful about what Wendy is going through. And the insider claims that he has been giving and throwing a lot of shade at her, mocking her for having dementia and losing everything that she has worked for over the years. The insider claimed that Kevin sees this as payback for Wendy stopping his alimony payments even after he begged her publicly. He had to sell his house to pay off his debts and he allegedly blames Wendy for it. Y'all, it's the sad audacity for me because Kevin is just plain wrong and nasty for this. Fans are furious with Kevin and The Guardian and they believe in comments saying, Wendy is like this because of Kevin. The whole Kevin and baby saga was the beginning of her end unfortunately. I honestly think Wendy's heartbreak behind that man cheating sent her down a spiral. Still to this day, even with the late onset dementia, she's still mentioning that divorce in Kevin. And I think what breaks my heart even more about Wendy Williams being diagnosed with dementia is that even though she has lost her memory, she still remembers the trauma of what happened to her in her marriage. Y'all prayers are up for Wendy Williams. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Do you think Wendy will ever get better?